Hello, good morning, and welcome to week 11 of the Final Fantasy XIV informational series. It's a bonus video for those of you who like bonuses. This is like the 40th time I've recorded it because I just can't seem to get it right. So I've got a few notes with me this time because I decided I'm done winging these videos. <laughs> Alright, so I want to talk about two things. I uh, spoke about them earlier today, but I want to elaborate on them a little bit more just because there's still some confusion around the air. I feel like I could have been a little bit more clear and concise, and I could have covered a lot more. So first I want to talk about starting cities. Now, I've gotten two major questions. One is, why is there no healing class for two of the cities, Ulda and Lipsa And two, what if I want to play with a friend and we want to play classes that don't start in the same cities? Does that mean that this isn't possible? So, first I want to talk about the fact that there's no healing class. I had a question that thought that that might be problematic, and I want to say, I don't think it is. Uh, originally, I thought in my head, oh yeah, that's kind of weird, why wouldn't they do that? Then I remembered why they didn't do it. The game is solo from 1 to 15, primarily, and there's really no need for the content that's there unless you're really trying to do stuff that's over-leveled for you. That you need a healer. There's plenty of potions and foods that'll help keep you alive, and uh, most of the stuff isn't difficult enough to require any sort of potions. It doesn't really even give Conjure an edge of the fact that they can heal themselves because they don't heal for enough over the monsters that are hitting them while they're soloing. So everybody's pretty much on even terms. Now, that doesn't mean that playing with your friends that the playing with your friends problem is not still a problem now yes if you want to play gladiator and your friend wants to play conjurer you're going to be in two different starting cities then there's nothing you can do about that that's if you're brand new characters now of course when you hit level 15 you're more than welcome to go and meet each other during the main story do the dungeon together you're more than welcome to do that but i still recommend that you solo 1 to 15 get a hang of your class get a hang of the abilities you got get all your guild class quests done so you can have the right abilities and then go on and start exploring with your friend and getting everything done now it kind of sucks that you can't play with your friend from 1 to 15 unless you really want to sacrifice some things. But honestly, I would want the solo experience anyway so I can stay up to date with the quest. Uh, if you go out of the way and you start partying with a friend, you might find that you're not getting enough experience because you're splitting it in half because you're in a party. You know, that's what happens when you join a party. Your experience gets split in half. You both need to get it, and the monster needs to give it. And I just think that it's okay that there's no healing class uh, in all the cities. Arcanist and Thaumaturge, sorry, you guys don't count. Uh, anyway, that's done with starting cities. I feel like I've completed that circle enough. It does suck that not being able to play with your friends for the first 15 levels, but don't worry, because after the first 15 levels, that'll never happen again. You guys will meet, converge, play, do whatever you want. It'll be fun. Now, the other thing I want to talk about that's a bit more confusing are servers. Um, ever since the release of the data center uh, post on the Lodestone, there's been a lot of questions about Japan and North American and European uh, servers. So... What, are that, what does that mean? I said previously that servers are universal. You can go anywhere you want. And that's still true. You can go to any server that you want, assuming your character meets qualifications for it, such as if it's a legacy uh, character, you can't go to non-legacy servers. And if you're a brand new character, you're free to go wherever you want, as long as the server isn't full. Now, what does the data centers thing mean then? Why does it say that this server is Japan and the server is North America and Europe? Then that's not universal. Well, they are universal. Here's why. The servers themselves are universal. If you want to go play on a Japanese server, you are more than welcome. However, prepare to experience the same lag that you felt in 1.0. What does that mean? Well, in 1.0, all the data centers were in Japan. You can see that from the post, that all the data centers were in Japan. That means we all play with about 300 to 500 MS, which, for those of you who don't know, is annoying when you're trying to dodge abilities during a fight. It means you have to be one step ahead of the fight. It gives you a keen mind, but it can be quite annoying. Uh, and it was one of the main reasons why 1.0 really couldn't catch on in North America and Europe, even though it kind of still, it fell apart all over the world, but, you know, uh, now that there's data centers in North America and Europe, although it is only one more data center, so Europeans, you might still be a little bit, yeah, in terms of MS, but it won't be as bad. Um, so, what, what does that mean? So, that means you can go to any server you want, despite that, as long as you're willing to deal with MS and servers that aren't from your region. But what about the... What about if my server's in Japan, it's still in Japan, and I want to play on a different server? I mean, I know I get to recreate my character once, but what about server changes? Make sure if you have a 1.0 legacy character that you, in the middle of June, go fill out a world transfer application. That's right. There is going to be an application form to change servers. Um, I would highly recommend conversing with your friends and on the forums to find a place where you fit in. I'm going to Ragnarok. That's my personal choice, and it's a little bit of an inside joke for me, especially if you've seen some other videos on my channel about Ragnarok Online 2. Not a good game. Uh, 
And that's just my choice. You know, I want to go there to North American European legacy server. I don't want to be on a Japanese server because I don't want to deal with the MS. And that's my final decision. So that's when, when the time comes, I'm going to put in a world transfer application to that server. It'll be digital. It'll be easy. It just, it's literally just going to be character name, service account, you know, any other information they need, and what servers, what server you want to go to. So that is all for week 11 of the Final Fantasy 14 informational bonus video. Don't forget E3 June 11th through June 13th. We're going to have Lightning Returns versus 13 Final Fantasy 14 videos, Scholar, Summoner, everything you could have ever imagined, an Ifrit fight from uh, A Realm Reborn, which I'm sure everyone is going to want to see on. I think it's June 12th. Hmm. It's one of the days, but I guess we'll find out then. So anyway, thank you for watching, and I hope this was uh, helpful to you. Please like, favorite, subscribe, share. Share if you've got cool friends, at least share it with them, because they're cool. Obviously, if you have friends cool enough to want to watch this video, you got cool friends. And go like my Facebook page, by the way. You can ask more questions there. Sure, you can ask questions in the comments, but if you have a Facebook, I recommend you go over to Facebook. And, you know, you just like uh, my comments in the description below. You'll find it. So thank you for watching, and have a good